friends, welcome back to another week of BDZ Online with Miss B and Ethel. We hope that you are doing well. We miss your faces and we can't wait to give you real life high fives and hugs. Today we're learning that Jesus's power takes action. And all you're going to need for today's supplies are paper and pen. Before we move to our Bible story though, I want us to hear from one of my super cool, awesome, fantastic unicorn friends. She's one of our BDZ buddies. You all know her and love her. And she's going to share her God sighting for the week. Being able to FaceTime my friends during coronavirus is a God sighting. Today's Bible story comes from the book of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. And you can read it later if you want. The story starts in Jerusalem near a place called the Pool of Bethesda. This pool had hundreds of sick people lying nearby waiting for healing. So why don't you lie down? Taz, you're our example. So lie down, get comfy. Everybody good? Good. Okay, because you're gonna have to lie like that while I tell you what happened. It says the people lying by the pool weren't so comfy because they were all sick. The Bible says some were blind, some couldn't walk and some were paralyzed. Why were they lying by this particular pool? Well, they believed that every so often an angel of the Lord would come and stir up the water. And the first one to get in the water after the water swirled would be healed. So they laid there and they waited and they waited. Can you do jumping jacks while you wait, Taz? No, you can't get up. I don't think you can because you really aren't supposed to even be able to move your feet, huh? A little frustrating. Well, one day, Jesus was walking by the pool and saw a man lying there. Jesus knew the man had been sick for 38 years. He couldn't walk. So Jesus asked the man, would you like to get well? Hmm. The man said, I can't. I seem to hear myself saying the same thing about the coronavirus. I can't go to work. I can't go to BDZ. So what are some things you can't do during this virus situation? So everybody holler out things you can't do during this difficult time. We'll wait. They're just chilling. Thanks for sharing, you guys. Yeah, we all seem to be limited by what we can't do right now. But let's get back to the Bible story. Here's a man lying near the pool with no one to help him get in the water. So you try it without moving. Go to the kitchen sink and rinse your hands. Then all your troubles will be over. Can you do that, Taz? No, because you can't move. Think how frustrating that would be for this man who just wanted to get in the pool. Then along comes Jesus asking the man if he wants to be healed. And instead of saying yes, the man said, I can't. Thankfully, Jesus didn't leave it at that. He said, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. So Taz, quick, jump up. Jump in place. You can jump now. Good, so the man rolled up his sleeping mat and began to walk. Can you roll up your mat? Did you see what happened? Jesus healed him, but he had to take action too. So now you can walk too. There you go. So now I want you to take your mat and I want you to march in place, walk around the pool a little bit. And I bet you guys can come up with some great ideas. I want you to come up with something that you can do during this difficult time. See, I can still make funny videos with my dog and put her in funny outfits. I can still sit in the sunshine and I can still call my friends. Sometimes it's easy to make excuses about what Jesus wants us to do. Maybe you think you're too shy or you're too young, but Jesus calls us to take action. And with his power and help, there are plenty of ways we can take action just this second. Just like we're learning today, Jesus's power takes action. Let's talk about our Bible story for just a minute, that Jesus's power takes action. What can you and your family do right now? Not I can't, but I can. Get the paper and pen that you were supposed to pull out and make a plan. Write down things that you all think that you could do. Maybe it's to make an encouraging sign and hang it outside. Maybe it's to send a card to one of um, our church's shut-ins or maybe just someone you know who's stuck by themselves. Maybe it's to FaceTime a friend or maybe take silly videos with your dog. How about that? 
There are some awesome ideas I'm sure you all can come up with. So pause the video and talk about it. Write down your plan and then you can make it happen. Thanks for those creative ideas. Jesus' power takes action. And now you've come up with a plan to turn the I can'ts into I can's. So let's see another way that we can turn an I can't into an I can. We're gonna try to balance on one foot. Everybody see how long can you balance on one foot while looking all around the room without stopping to turn your head. So families at home, you try to stop. No, you can't hold the table, Elizabeth. I wasn't holding Grab it. your foot, balance on one foot. Look your head all around the room, all around the room. It's a little hard, huh? It might make you feel like I can't balance very well, but let's show a very fun sciencey trick to make you balance better. So pick something at eye level. You can stare at the phone, the camera. So focus on that. Stand on one foot and hold one earlobe between your thumb and your finger and see how long you can hold it. That's a lot easier, isn't it? By focusing on one thing, it's easier to balance. And that reminds me of how focusing on Jesus can help me stand strong. And our ears help provide balance. So holding your ear is a neat trick to help you balance. And that reminds us to listen for what Jesus is asking us to do. So we can turn our I can'ts into I can's. Remember how in our Bible story, the first person in the pool would be healed. In this game, I'm going to call out an object and you are gonna be the first one in your family to touch that object. And when you find it, I want you to make some kind of silly noise that everybody knows is you. And you have to say it really loudly. So Taz, what's your sound? Hee haw. Nice, all right, you, got, you have to do it really loudly when you find your object. And Lizzie, what's yours? <laughs> okay. So, ready? Yeah. You have to touch the object. Okay. And then you make the noise, all right? A pillow. <laughs> Something electronic. Something red. You have to touch it first. Your toothbrush. A ball. A piece of paper, a spoon, water from a faucet. What a great way to play that game. In our game, the goal was to be the first person to touch the object. And that reminds me of our Bible story, especially the last object you touch, the water. Remember, the man wanted to touch the water, but he couldn't. I want you to think about this question. This week, how can you turn someone's can't into can? Pause the video and talk about it with your family. Jesus's power takes action, and we can always look to him when we need his help, getting rid of our I can't attitude. His power will help us take action and encourage us to do something for him. And those good things can start right here in your own family. Now I want you to think about ways that you and your family have helped each other out through this time. Maybe you helped mom cook dinner. Maybe you helped your brother do his math. Just go around your family and say at least one thing that your family members have helped you with. And then make sure to thank them for helping. So pause the video and start sharing. I'm so glad Jesus's power takes action and that Jesus is always there to help us. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for loving us and helping us take action during this time. I just pray a special healing over those that are suffering with illness. And I pray that you would be there with those who are suffering because of this illness and the things that it's taken from us. 
And I pray that we would see the things that it's given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now it's time to add a picture to your thankful journal. I want you to think of something that you can do right now. Draw it in your journal and put today's date on it so you can look back on it later and see all the awesome things that you can be thankful for. I want to see you back here next week, but don't forget to send in all of your God sightings. I love hearing them. I love seeing your faces. And so does Ethel, don't you? Yeah. All right. You guys have a wonderful week and we will see you soon. Bye. Say bye, Ethel. Bye.